Hello Church, it's Drew here with our daily devotion for Wednesday morning, December the 16th, 2020. Our text is again from Ephesians chapter 16 on Monday, chapter 6, excuse me. On Monday, we enjoyed some discussion about the whole armor of God. I've had some wonderful conversations via Facebook and email since then, so I want to come back to it. Specifically, the last few verses, 18 through 20. I want to read those for us. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an, amb an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. These verses are all about prayer, and a careful reading makes us think deeply about the role of prayer in our own lives, in the practice of the Christian faith, and in the life of the church. Each of us has unspoken beliefs about prayer. We see those beliefs at work in how prayer is a part of our lives. If it's just something we do on Sunday, that says something about our beliefs about prayer. If it's something we do at, at mealtimes, pretty much only, that says something else about what we believe about prayer. If it's something we actively do as a part of our daily routine, that says something else yet again. If it's something we only do in times of crisis, that says yet another thing about what we believe about prayer and even about God. Take just a moment and think about the role of prayer in your own life. Just take a minute and think about that. If you're like me, you're probably a complicated mix of those descriptions I just gave. And that's okay. I think God understands. But I also think God desires more from us in this realm of the spiritual life. We wonder exactly what prayer does. Is it a magic spell? Some people use it like that. Is it just a spiritual discipline that keeps our minds focused on the right things? Some people treat it like that. Is it just for preachers and overly religious people? No, we know better than that. So if prayer isn't a magic spell or a way to get what we want from God, then what is it? Jesus gave us an example. You remember when you pray, pray like this. He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, prayer is a conversation with God. It is the cultivation of a relationship. And the scriptures promise that the Holy Spirit inside of we who follow Jesus helps us with our praying. Praying takes many forms. Sometimes it is just worship and adoration full of praise and thanksgiving for God's gifts in Jesus and in life. Sometimes it is deep lament. We're just mad and we need to sit and be mad with God or even at God. We lament. Go and read the Psalms, especially those in the 70s and 80s. King David was an expert lamenter. Some of you have been in my office lamenting this year. I'm grateful for it. It means we love each other, and our relationship is being stretched as, stretched as we grow in our love for one another and for Jesus. It hurts sometimes, but it is the price we pay for authentic relationship. Sometimes in our prayer, we pour our hearts out to God unburdening our concerns and fears, our needs and pains, our struggles and anxieties. We trust that God is listening, and we take some comfort in leaving those things at God's feet, even when we don't hear any clear response. Faith carries these moments, and the Spirit does what the Spirit does. That's prayer. We don't pray to change God's mind. We pray and we worship so that the Spirit can change our minds and our hearts, aligning us with the work of Jesus in a world that we will never fully understand. Prayer is one of the things that God uses to help us become the people God is calling us to be in this foreign land, which Jesus is always turning upside down. Without this gift, the gift of prayer, we are left to our own devices just trying to do what we feel is best, plotting, planning, trying to make things happen in our own time. We get angry, we get tired, we fight, we bicker because we are disconnected from the one who binds us together for this incredible work that is our mission, 
the living and building of God's new creation, loving the world back to life one heart at a time. Our church has long had a heart for prayer. We have a half dozen prayer groups meeting weekly to pray and nurture one another in this work to pray for the church, the concerns of our faith community and our larger community and our world. When the new sanctuary was built, I think 16 or 17 years ago, the pastor wrote on the floor, wrote on the floor under the carpet, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples from Isaiah 56, 7. It's in your DNA as First Methodist Church and it's in mine too. I and some of your prayer warriors, Sherry Roberts, have felt called to lead us in a 24-7 a prayer vigil. We're ready to start that work. I'd like to challenge you to choose at least an hour each week for this work of prayer together as a church family. We've built a special 24-7 prayer web page with a current list of areas of focus for our prayer, a link to the prayer list, and a section of helpful tools to get you oriented to this kind of a thing, if it's something that you've never done before. On the prayer page, you'll find an introductory video and a link to the sign-up, which is live right now. You can take as many slots as you'd like. I thought we'd do this through the end of the year and then see where we are in January. I suspect we'll continue, but you may decide to change your time or take a break or whatever the Lord is revealing to you. The vision is to have specific folks praying for God's mission unfolding in our church 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Our most fervent prayer, whether you're part of the vigil or not, is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, the unity of the Spirit that is the bond of peace. It is God's gift to the church, and we need it now more than ever. I hope you'll join your heart with my heart in this very special end-of-the-year prayer vigil. Let's see what God will do as we create space in our hearts and in, our, in the heart of our church so that the Holy Spirit can align us with the work of Jesus in this world. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see what happens. Give me a call if you want to talk about it or send me an email. I'm ready to discuss and to think through how to do this really well. See below this video for all the links that you need to uh, click through and sign up and figure out what this might mean in your life. I hope you have a great day. I'll be praying for you, praying with you as you uh, just be who you are in this world. Followers of Jesus with hearts full of love. I love you very much. Thank you.